Okay, so here's the second example that would have been on the group activity, and that is sulfur tetrafluoride. So I'm going to go through the steps here. Um, so first off, separate the anions and cations. This is a intact covalent compound, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, very important to some of the valence electrons. The sulfur contributes six, and each of the fluorines contributes seven which gives us 6 plus 28, or a total of 34 valence electrons. And the next thing is to assemble the bonding framework. So the way that you can infer that the structure based on the formula is that you've got sulfur in the middle and four fluorines attached to it. All right, so that's the first three steps in the procedure. Let's keep going. All right, now this time I'm gonna just kind of keep doing this on, I'm gonna keep working on one or two structures because, well, quite frankly, it's a lot of electrons to draw. So I'm gonna pick up where we left off with the framework here. So we've got sulfur, four fluorines bonded to it. And now by this we have accounted for eight of the 34 valence electrons on here. So the next step, number four, is gonna put unshared electron pairs around the peripheral atoms up to three, um, except if it's hydrogen. Um, hydrogen only wants two, um, so basically hydrogen only makes single bonds, one line, you're done with the hydrogen. But we don't have hydrogen, so let's start drawing dots. All right, so we have eight electrons already accounted for, so this is gonna be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So I've got three unshared pairs around each of the fluorines but I also still have two more electrons to stick on there. And so we've taken care of this step. So step five, um, this is a case where you have remaining electrons and they go as unshared pairs on the central atom. Now, uh, people seem to always want to draw things as squares or at least with 90 degree angles. And at this point with already four bonds to the sulfur, you might think, where do I put them? And the answer is actually pretty simple. Just put them in between two of the bonds, like that. You wanna keep them paired. Now, you might think that this is a problem. And then would be because if you are doing, um, so let's look on to step six, now we're looking for octet or formal charge issues. From an octet standpoint, you know, the fluorines are fine. Fluorines are okay. In that they've got eight electrons, three unshared pairs and one shared pair each. But sulfur has 10 by this counting. And it does, but that is okay. Um, if you so the octet rule really only applies to second row elements. So things like beryllium, boron, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, I think that's all of them, and neon, but neon doesn't really bond. Um, so once you get to third row elements, like our friend sulfur here, the magic number is no longer eight, it can be as high as 18. So this is what's called an expanded octet. And third row elements or higher can do it. Um, but it's not free. Um, there is an energetic cost to having an expanded octet for a particular atom. So generally this happens only if it helps the 
the formal charge situation. And so let's take a look at that actually. So let's get our formal charge purple pen out here. So what's the formal charge on a fluorine here? So think about how many electrons can be assigned to fluorine in this structure. And you've got six unshared electrons, and then you've got one from the shared pair. So that's seven. And fluorine atoms usually have seven valence electrons. So that fluorine atom, all four of them, actually have no formal charge at all. So let's talk about the sulfur. In this structure, you can assign, well, think about this. How many electrons can you assign to that structure, to a sulfur in that structure? Well, you can assign six. Um, you've got the unshared, you've got two unshared electrons and half of the shared electrons, which brings you up to four. Now, sulfur atoms usually have six valence electrons, which means that sulfur has no formal charge either. Now, the formal charges nicely add up to the overall charge, zeros all around. Um, so this is actually, and so we have, let's see, let's do our little checklist here. Have we minimized the formal charges? Yes, we have. I should tell you that um, there may be some cases where you cannot completely eliminate formal charges. One very important case is polyatomic ions. So the rule is that the formal charges on all the atoms add up to what the overall charge, the actual charge on the thing is. So if it's a polyatomic ion, it has a net charge. So something's not gonna be zero. And there are some cases where even if it's a neutral compound, you just can't get it to zero without, uh, usually it would be without breaking the octet rule for a second row element, which is something you do not do. So in here we can actually say so we can check for remaining formal charges, minimize and repeat, but we are actually good here. There are a few more things I want to bring out or point out here. Um, and this deals with fluorine. Fluorine being the most electronegative element there is should never have a positive formal charge. If you do that, you will not get points for that Lewis structure. So this is the second major absolute don't do it, no, no of Lewis structures. To review, the first one is don't exceed an octet on a second row element. And the other one is don't give fluorine a formal charge. Um, one result of this, is that fluorine actually only has single bonds. Because if you were to put a, there's no way that you could put a double bond to a fluorine atom and not get a positive formal charge. Um, so this is nice that um, hydrogen and fluorine. So you've got two elements here before you see them, you know it's only gonna be a single bond. All right, and that is the Lewis structure of sulfur tetrafluoride. Um, there is one more step check for resonance structures. That does not apply here, but it is the subject in its entirety of the next video. So check that one out.